remember that the best way to study is to take practice tests. And if you don't have any good practice tests, you can make them and learn while you do it at learnmytest.com. That's www.learnmytest.com. Sign up for free. My name is Brian Collin, and today's topic is Martin Seligman's theory of learned helplessness optimism. Before we jump into Seligman's work, I want you to pause the video and write down two things. The first one is a time you failed at something. So think of a time that you failed at something and write that down. And then for number two, explain why you failed at that thing that you put for number one. So there's two more things. Number three, I want you to write a time that you succeeded at something. And then for number four, I want you to put why you think you succeeded at the thing you described in number three. Martin Seligman was a clinical psychologist who sought out to study a phenomenon called learned helplessness. Learned helplessness is when people fail at a goal repeatedly and then they eventually stop trying to succeed. They learn to be helpless. To study learned helplessness, Seligman conducted a study where he put two groups of dogs in two similar conditions. The first group of dogs was placed in a box with a lever and a harness. The dogs were shocked repeatedly until they pressed the lever in the box, and then after pressing the lever, the shocks would stop. The dogs were then placed in a different box with a small barrier in the middle of it. The dogs were placed on the left side of the barrier and were shocked repeatedly until they jumped over to the right side of the barrier where they could avoid the shock. 100% of the dogs in group one of Seligman's study jumped over the barrier from the left to the right side and successfully avoided the shock. The dogs in group two were put in the same box as the dogs in group one, except pressing the lever did not stop the shocks. Dogs in group two were placed in the same exact scenario for the second condition as the dogs in group one. The difference was that only one in three dogs in group two, compared to all the dogs in group one, jumped the barrier to avoid the shock. Dogs in group one successfully stopped the shock by pressing a lever. They were then placed in a second condition where they all jumped a barrier to avoid getting shocked. The dogs in group two had no chance to stop the shocks in the first condition, so they failed. And then in a separate condition, where they had a fair chance to stop the shocks, two-thirds of them gave up. They learned to be helpless. The one-third of dogs who jumped the barrier in the second group did not let the failure from the first condition affect them trying in the second condition. These dogs saw their failure in the first condition as something temporary. Seligman defined an optimistic explanatory style as explaining failure as something temporary. An example of an optimistic explanation is, I got an F because I didn't study hard enough. This student believes that his F is temporary because if he studies harder the next time, he will likely do better on his exam. A pessimistic explanatory style or explanation describes failure as something permanent. An example of a pessimistic explanation is, I got an F because I am dumb. The failure led the student to put a permanently negative label on his or herself. If the student believes he or she is stupid or dumb, why should he or she continue to try on future tests? Now is a chance to pause the video and look at your explanations for failure from the beginning of the video. Would you consider them optimistic or pessimistic? You can learn to be optimistic by looking at failure as something temporary. If you start blaming yourself or saying something will never happen, then ask yourself these questions. What about the specific circumstance prevented you from succeeding? How could the situation or circumstance have been changed to make you successful? And what are some things that you could have done differently 
to have put yourself in a position to be successful. Optimists look at failure as something temporary, and they also look at success as something permanent. For example, if a doctor wins the best doctor award at his hospital and says, I'm a great doctor, he uses that success to help him build confidence in his skills as a doctor, so he will continue to work hard. By identifying success as something permanent, optimists are able to use successes as opportunities to build confidence to pursue harder and more challenging goals. Pessimists tend to view failure as something permanent and successes as something temporary. An example of a pessimistic explanation is, the only reason I aced that math test is because my teacher gives super easy tests. In this case, this student views his, his or her success as something temporary, so if the teacher gives a harder test, maybe he would do worse. The reality is that this student was smart enough to ace his or her test and should acknowledge what he or she is capable of. This student misses an opportunity to use this test and this success to build confidence. Review your successes that you wrote down at the beginning of the video. Was your reason for your success optimistic or pessimistic? To become more optimistic, identify and challenge your pessimistic thoughts. Try to identify your successes as something permanent. Remember that you succeeded because you were capable of succeeding. Why should you be an optimist? Optimists tend to achieve more, are happier, and make better grades than do pessimists. Sligman's transformation from looking at learned helplessness to learned optimism led him to start the positive psychology movement, which instead of studying what, what's wrong with people, focuses on what makes people happy. If you are interested in learning more about Seligman's work, check out his book, Learned Optimism. The best way to study is to create your own practice tests and take them to reinforce the material. Build your own practice test for free at www.learnmytest.com. We will be posting new psychology videos every week. Click on the Learn My Test icon below to subscribe and stay updated on our latest videos. Thank you again for watching.